In this example, we will evaluate a rather simple data table where expense amounts over a range of dates is organized into billable and non-billable expense types. We can analyze this data in a line chart by inserting a new page and inserting a line chart on the page. The line currently drawn represents an individual data point for the total expense amount for each date in the underlying data table. This view of the data is not yet suitable for forecasting because it does not present time series data points spaced at even intervals. We could make it suitable by using one of the time series aggregation methods available within the x-axis selector. We will select the year, quarter, month, which provides us with a hierarchy slider to select the level of data aggregation. And let's initially place our focus on only the billable data. This page will represent our actual data, which will be presented to the Holt Winters algorithm in order to generate the forecast data. Let's preserve this view by duplicating the page and renaming the new page Initial Forecast. In order to apply the Holt Winters forecast method to this data, we will launch the Properties dialog and go to the Lines and Curves section. We can remove the default horizontal line and use the Add button to select Forecast Holt Winters from the list of available curve fit algorithms. We will leave all values in the resulting dialog at their default settings and click OK. Then close the Line Chart Properties dialog. You can see that two new lines have been drawn on our line chart. The solid black line represents the fitted line, which is the result of the smoothing algorithm's attempt to remove random variability and account for seasonal factors. The dotted black line represents the forecast, which is a continuation of that fitted line, extended into dates beyond those provided in the actual data. Notice that the data is currently set to generate a forecast, which is four time points ahead of the actual data. If we slide the hierarchy slider to year, that projection is four years ahead. If we slide the hierarchy slider to month, it's four months ahead. And if we return the slider to quarters, it is four quarters ahead. We can adjust the number of time points ahead by returning to the Properties dialog, Lines and Curves section. This dialog is the location where we can adjust the myriad options available for the Holt Winters forecast method. After selecting the parent line for this curve fit, we can click the Edit button to reveal these options. Here is where the current number of time points is set to four and we will change that to 12 and click OK. Now the forecast projects data 12 quarters or three years forward of the actual data. Again, if we slide the hierarchy slider, this would adjust to 12 years or 12 months, depending upon how this line chart is configured to define the time point interval. Note that by default, only two of the three line types are checked. If we check the box next to confidence, you can see the dashed red lines which are drawn on either side of the forecast line. These represent the boundaries of the 95% confidence interval. And as you might expect, the range of that confidence interval broadens as we project dates further away from the actual data. There is a setting which allows us to enter the confidence level we want for this interval. However, we first need to select the parent line for this curve fit, then click the edit button. Let's increase the stringency of our confidence level by entering 0.99 or 99% and click OK. Because it might be difficult to compare different confidence interval settings, let's right-click in order to duplicate the visualization. Then, we can edit the Holt Winters forecast confidence level for one of the copies. For comparison purposes, let's set the confidence level to 0.9 or 90% and click OK and close the properties dialog. Again, as you would expect, the boundaries defined by a 99% confidence interval are broader than those defined by a 90% confidence interval. If you hover your mouse over the forecast line, you can see the tooltip information box displayed. This box shows us the values for each of the three smoothing constants, as well as the seasonal model type and frequency. Just like the number of time points ahead, these factors have adjustment options. Let's duplicate this page and rename the page Additional Forecast Adjustments. And we'll delete the line chart which displays 90% confidence intervals. Now we can return to the Properties dialog, Lines and Curves section, select the parent line for this curve fit, and click the Edit button. Note that the three smoothing constants, alpha, beta, and gamma, which modify the level, trend, and seasonal components of the algorithm, respectively, are all currently set to automatic. 
the automatic setting simply means that the smoothing constants are optimized automatically. This is the default setting and will also occur anytime these fields are left blank. You may, however, wish to apply the knowledge you have regarding your data to direct the forecast by entering constants. Each of these fields will accept a value between 0 and 1. Values closer to 1 mean more weight is placed on our more recent expense amounts, and values closer to 0 place more weight on our older or historical expense amounts. Let's enter a value of 0.1 for the level or alpha smoothing constant and click OK. Again, in an effort to make a comparison, let's duplicate the visualization and edit the Holt Winters forecast settings for one of the copies to an alpha smoothing constant of 0.9 and click OK. The top visualization favors more recent data and is likely to adapt more quickly to changes in our pattern of expenses. However, it may also overreact to outlying expense values. The bottom visualization favors historical expense data to determine the level component of the forecast algorithm. Let's close the bottom line chart and once again edit the settings for the Holt Winters forecast method. Note that we could fix the smoothing constants for the trend and seasonal components by typing in values between 0 and 1. However, we will not for this example. In fact, if we want our level component smoothing constant to be calculated automatically, we can clear this value and leave the field blank. Note that the seasonal component of the forecast algorithm has additional settings. These options are available only if the seasonal component is included as a part of the whole winter's forecast algorithm. We can choose additive or multiplicative. We might choose additive if our expense amounts are generally higher in, say, the fourth quarter of each year by a fixed amount like $1,000 whereas we would choose multiplicative if our expense amounts are generally relatively higher in the fourth quarter of each year by a factor like 20%. Also note that the seasonal frequency can be calculated automatically, or you can specify a number of time points to define a season. For example, perhaps because of the way our contracts are structured, we have expenses which cycle over a two-year period rather than a one-year period. Typing 8 will indicate 8 quarters to define a seasonal cycle. When we click OK and close the Properties dialog, you can see the impact on the line chart. Currently, we have filtered to view only the billable data. We could return the non-billable data to the line chart, and the forecast results will adjust to accommodate all expense types. We could compare the two by dragging and dropping expense type upon the stacked trellis target. Note that the forecast results are calculated independently for each trellis panel, revealing an increasing trend in billable expenses and a decreasing trend in non-billable expenses. In fact, if we return to the Properties dialog, Lines and Curves section, you can see that forecasting may be applied independently to the lines in your line chart, which are defined by color, trellis panel, or line by properties. Note also that by default, the forecast will adjust dynamically to changes like filter settings. However, if you experience performance issues as a result of these dynamic updates, you may wish to check the box to update manually. Bear in mind that the settings we've been editing are available when the parent line for the curve fit is selected and we click upon the Edit button, giving us the ability to explore the impact of different settings. For example, what happens if we remove the trend component entirely from the forecast algorithm? It appears that our trend differences between billable and non-billable are no longer as evident. Note, however, that selecting any of the children of the forecast Holt Winters line fit and clicking the Edit button will only give you the ability to change the name of the line. However, when selected, you also have the ability to change the color of the line or the style and size of the line. You may also wish to click on the Label and Tooltip button in order to select specific items for perpetual display as labels. So whether it is these aesthetic features, or the settings which instruct the Holt Winters algorithm, the location for making these adjustments is the Lines and Curves section of the Properties dialogs for the Line Chart, Bar Chart, Combination Chart, or Scatter Plot, which you have configured to display the even interval time series data to be used by the Holt Winters method for forecasting data.